And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, NFL showdown Thursday night, the 10th of September. NFL kicking off. Good luck to everybody who's got fantasy football drafts tonight. Uh, I mean, that should be a lot of you guys probably. It's the last day before the season starts. Uh, I am psyched. I don't have my kids on Sunday, so I get to watch NFL all day long. Like, just bring it on, baby. Bring on the NFL. It's king. That's awesome. NFL's back. Uh, I got two drafts tonight, so busy man, and let's get it. I'm sure you guys all are very, very excited. Uh, in honor of being excited for the NFL, do me a favor. Click the thumbs up button on this video. Uh, subscribe to the station if you're happy to be new to it. I'm really excited to talk about uh, these showdown slates and then get into the main slate, hopefully later today or tomorrow. Um, speaking of which, we will get back over to Overlay later on this week to do our final thoughts videos on the NFL slates that are coming up. Um, we got a, what is it? Where is the jackpot? Right there. On the $22 jackpot. We're looking at, or the $22 progressive contest, the jackpot is coming up closer to like 12 k That'd be a hell of a payday. Do you remember the week last year where I think I ended up being two picks off and you were one off, but it was the same pick? Yep, I do remember that all too well. Yeah, that would be a nice payday. Hopefully we can uh, rally on that last pick and get it done this year. And if it's not us, hopefully it's one of you guys. Keep entering these contests, guys. If you can't find your way in the money, the Slump Buster Challenge will get you paid. And the very excellent customer service they have here, making sure everybody gets their money, is a, one to be appreciated. Mm -hmm. All right. So going to be interesting watching football with no fans this year. And, you know, you brought up the point, like, KC is an elite home field advantage. Like, you wonder how that plays out with no fans. Yeah, we no idea. I guess we'll find out tomorrow night. We're all watching. See, now Kansas City, obviously, they won the Super Bowl for a reason, so maybe if it's less of a factor with a good team, but we'll watch it play out because a couple of these teams, you know, the Chargers have to be loving this this year because they never have a home field advantage anyway. That's <laughs> so true. All right, guys. So before we get into the actual plays, we did a members-only video for this one last night, kind of breaking down roster construction, GPP versus cash. If you're interested in the NFL package, which is still on sale through the website, it's 20% off right now. It's normally $100. It's $80. It'll be up until Friday, at which point we'll be moving it to a full price. We do members-only videos for showdown slates on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, we do write-ups for main slate and prime time. Those come with videos as well. We'll be covering the full regular season and the playoffs. This is all included within the NFL package. You know, If you don't really dabble in basketball and baseball too much, it's a good deal for you. Grab that 20% off. Uh, click the thumbs up button, subscribe if you can, and then let's start out with the obvious uh, kiss, Occam's razor, chalk talk, whatever you want to call it. Don't enter the slate without putting Patrick Mahomes into your lineup. His ownership will be well over 90%, probably closer to 100 than 90. Uh, you guys know that quarterbacks are already the safest place for points, and when you get a guy who's going to be a parental MVP candidate for the next 500 years, you know, you want him in your lineup. Don't overthink this. The only question is to captain or not to captain. Yeah, we talked about this at length on the members only video. Hard not to play Mahomes here. I mean, listen, it's it's one game. It's the Chiefs. It's Mahomes at home. Uh, I expect Houston to be competitive in this game, and we'll talk about that here. But it's hard to it's hard to predict. It's hard to expect Mahomes not at least playing well here. I mean, relative to the field, at least for sure. That's a great way to put it relative to the field because it's there's only so many guys up there and you can take cheaper guys. Like I feel like if you're trying so hard to be different that you fade Mahomes, like ultimately you're gonna light your money on fire playing these showdown contests more than anything. This is one I think you just mark them in. And if you want to be different, you know, we kind of highlighted some ways to do that on the members only video. Uh, this is just not the spot for me that you fade, and there's way too much risk here. And there's no guarantee you win or get top five in a GPP just by fading them. Definitely not. I mean, definitely no guarantee on that for sure. And I don't disagree with you. Like, it might work out tomorrow that fading Mahomes, like, is the move. But if you continuously just do it just to fade the guy, I think you're throwing your money away. Yeah, way more times than that. All right, next up. So take a look at the kickers. I, I think we kind of agreed that if just given one, we would take the kicker from the Chiefs. You know, at home, he's also a really good kicker for a very potent offense. So he's one of the better overall kickers to begin with. Uh, you know, you're limited in options in these showdown slates to play guys that are cheap, that are going to be a safe kind of baseline of points. That's where kickers, you know, they get a decent amount of love in these slates for that reason. The other thing that we talked about last night while doing the members only video that I think we both agreed on is there's been no preseason games. Uh, we have a very good offense, you know, in Kansas City and another offense led by a very good quarterback in Deshaun Watson. 
you know, it's not crazy to think that both of these teams move the ball in the 20s, but due to lack of just experience this year, being a weird year with practice, being no preseason games, maybe they're just a little off in the red zone. And you could definitely see a day where the kickers kick three, four, or five field goal attempts. Definitely. I mean, first game of the year, no preseason games. These teams, due to COVID, have had a much limited time together. It's easy to expect and predict that, you know, even if the teams move the ball, that they struggle to put it in the end zone. Definitely expect the Chiefs to move the ball based on Mahomes' talent level and the talent level of Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, Edwards, Allaire, all those guys alone. But not going to be surprised at all if the red zone offense struggled. And that's exactly what you want with Bucker. I could see Bucker being one of the highest scoring players on the slate, regardless of salary. And at 3,800, he just makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, I can give you a virtual guarantee that Mahomes, Bucker are two guys that will be in my lineup tomorrow. I get it. All right. Speaking of which, so I kind of want to get off the <coughs> path just a little bit. Uh, obviously, everybody's going to play Mahomes. We wanted to mention it just to make sure that, you know, we're like everybody else that's going to play Mahomes. But we wanted to talk about ways you could maybe get a little bit different. Uh, it's impossible to get super different on these slates because everybody gets a little bit of ownership. Like you're not going to get Macaulay Hardman at 1%. Way more people are going to buy him than that. But I don't expect him to be overwhelming chalk like a Patrick Mahomes, for example. So I think a question that could be brought up this year is, is Hardman going to pass Watkins as the number two guy for Kansas City? Maybe. I don't think he is as of yet. Watkins is a, you know, a solid number two guy. But they drafted Hardman for a reason. He's a big play guy. And I think one of the things that you might find is, while I expect the offenses to not be clicking 100%, it's very possible some of these secondaries aren't clicking 100% either. And a big play guy like this, you could see some busted coverage. Uh, Mahomes, with his ability to scramble, hit him down the field. And just a guy that, you know, maybe he's not 90%. Maybe he's 25% owned, for example. So much unknown everywhere. I like that call. It's kind of the flip side of what we talked about on the offenses. Like, why are the defenses all of a sudden going to be, like, up to speed and able to keep up right away? Big chance they're not. So, especially on the Chiefs side, definitely want to take a look at some of their pieces. And you're right, Hardman will be under-owned and lower-owned than a lot of other guys on this slate. No, he's not going to be 2% owned, but you don't want guys that are 2% owned on a slate like this. You want guys that are 20% owned, 25% owned, that you know if they go off, they give you some leverage, but they're not like completely off-the-reservation type plays. Yeah, I mean, I always made the comparison. Like I remember like five years ago, somebody's like, I'm going to stack against Clayton Kershaw today. Back when Kershaw was the obvious number one pitcher in baseball, he's like, nobody's going to do it. I'm like, well, nobody's going to do it. Because no, people never just flat out destroy Clayton Kershaw. And he usually goes at least seven innings. So there's a reason it's a 1% owned or less stack is because more often than not, you're just lighting your money on fire. If you're playing a guy in a showdown video and he's 1% or a showdown contest, like there's a good reason for it. And that's why I like you, everything you just mentioned. So I think Hardman gets under owned. I probably wouldn't play him in an optimal lineup. But if you're trying to leverage the field a little bit, I think he's somebody that gives you a small opportunity to do that. For sure. All right. So you're bigger on the Texans tomorrow than a lot of the masses are. Now, Deshaun Watson is their best player uh, now that Hopkins is gone. I think it's pretty definitive at this point. And he'll still get plenty of love because he's a quarterback. And he's a very, very good quarterback at that. Um, I think the thing that we talked about last night is if you're really trying to get crazy, I think his ownership within the captain spot for GPPs is very, very low. And, like, what if Kansas City gets a big lead in this one and then they run the ball a little bit and Watson's playing from behind, scrambles in a couple of touchdowns and stuff like that? That could be a potential way to get a little different. Yeah, regardless if you want to captain him or not, I still love the idea of rostering him here. He's going to get love, but he won't get as much love as Mahomes. And like you mentioned, not going to get nearly the love in the captain spot. Again, I like Houston to play well in this game. Got one more guy we're going to bring up here. And if you expect Houston to play well, you'll like Watson here. Now, the alternative scenario is they just run it down the Chiefs' throat. We've seen that before. But with David Johnson and Duke Johnson, two guys you don't expect to get, like, 20-plus carries. I mean, I think David Johnson gets a lot of touches, but a lot of those are going to come from Watson in the passing game. And I like the cut of his jib. I think everyone's sleeping on Houston this year. Super Bowl hangover for Kansas City. Give me all the Watson here. Yeah, I look at it this way, and then this is just a guess – for ownership. Like I think Mahomes legitimately comes in like 97% owned, 95% owned, something like that. And I think in the captain spot, you're going to see probably close to a third of the field, probably try to use him. I think Watson will be more like 85% owned, still, still chalk, 
But in the captain spot, I think he'll be under 10%. And that's the way, like, especially when you're developing your lineups from a GPP strategy, think about maybe why you think he's going to be, well, one, you know why he's lower on, but why you think maybe he goes off compared to Mahomes. Because what if he just has a better day? That could be a way to leverage the field a little bit, and you get extra salary cap. Truth. All right, so the next guy up is Will Fuller. Um, with Hopkins gone, Watson now loses as his security blanket. And the guy that the only guy really he's got a ton of familiarity with in this offense is going to be Will Fuller. So this is definitely more of a tournament call because you don't feel comfortable with it. It's not going to give you the woman fuzzies. But his upside is real, about as big as anyone on the slate. He's good. The only problem with him and why he's never really, you know, come to fruition, if you will, is because of his inability to stay on the field which is massive. He needs to stay on the field, but he's good to go at the start of the season. Again, this is much more of a tournament call. And if you like Houston, like I do, I love the upside that Fuller offers in tournaments. We've seen massive games from him before. A lot of new pieces are on the Houston offense. A lot of new pieces, a lot of new, you know, infamiliarities all over everything tomorrow. The one continuity, as you talked about, is Watson to Fuller. So it's risky, but I love the upside. Yeah, I'm very curious to watch this game, not just because it's the opening day of the NFL and I would watch anything that they threw at me, but to watch how Houston plays in this one because, I mean, I could see it working out in a variety of ways. Will Fuller is really the only guy Watson has a lot of familiarity with. Yes, there's the tight ends and there's, you know, Kenny Stills, for example, but uh, if Cooks plays tomorrow, Kenny Stills, I mean, how much is he even going to be on the field? So Will Fuller is the only guy that he's ever really played a professional game with. Even the running back, David Johnson, is brand new. Yes, Duke Johnson, he has some experience with last year. And I heard Duke Johnson feels significantly more comfortable in the system this year, which, I mean, I guess if you're looking for something else, maybe there is that in the well. Uh, but when it comes down to it, he has never played even a preseason game with Brandon Cooks if he plays or Randall Cobb. So Will Fuller would be the guy that he feels most comfortable with. It's been Hopkins for years that when plays would break down, that's the guy he looks for. But now Will Fuller is his best friend on the team. I don't know if they're actually best friends. I'm just saying the guy he knows the most. True. So, all right, guys. Uh, I know we're all excited for football to start tomorrow. Do me a favor. Click the thumbs up button. The NFL package remains on sale for the next couple of days. Go save yourself 20 bucks. It's up through the website. Otherwise, monthly, annual, lifetime customers, you get every sport that's active. We still got a full month of baseball coming up. We got a little NBA left to go. Uh, appreciate you all watching and have a great day. Thanks, guys.